six boost headphone monitoring we're up i know y'all seeing the the getting ready <coughs> stuff right now is just how it goes trying to make sure that all systems are operational and uh want to welcome you to lord yada studio you're getting a sneak peek a behind the scenes look at his face where he cranking out Hardcore artwork 24-7 for a long, long time. Look at that, writing upside down on y'all motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> there you go, let's show that. <laughs> it is upside down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let the intro start. And um, that reminds me, I have uh, my notes to look at. So we'll go ahead and start with the intro. Uh, give a shout out to our sponsors. We are not at post office right now. We're actually in Lord Yada's studio. So... Um, you're getting a special treat on that. Big ups to Cinemaker. And uh, they are the ones who um, sponsor all these goodies that allow us to use all types of different phones and cameras and iPads to work together. Set, um, sketchable app. That is what Lord Yada is drawing on right now. And uh, we are in partnership with uh, Sandflax, Cultivating Cultures, and uh, everybody else who supports the arts and the arts community. So we'll be right back, and um, we'll start with our intro. back so we're back and i was saying you can see my mouth moving and you couldn't hear me <laughs> there we go and uh it skips every two seconds i don't know why um um but i was saying that i was talking to aisha this morning and i was i mentioned to her that i think loriata is the first artist i'm 
I, I met in Atlanta, and I'm sure I met other people, but I don't think that anybody was ever that I met up to that point was doing art or drawing or consistent with their work or anything like that. And um, and I think that Loriata was the first one. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I'm sure you 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 because you've been here a long long time, so you you know plenty of people doing art and music and stuff like that. And yeah, I remember when we met though. Cause you had brought in a, a a business card from uh from West End Tattoo, no, from Superman. It was Tattoo. Superman's, yeah, Superman. huh? Yeah, I found I found the card. Yeah, I had found the card. And it said that you were at West End trying to get an apprenticeship. Yeah, I think it only lasted like a week or something. Yes, uh huh. Yeah, I, I showed up at West End. I was there for a couple of weeks, and then they started yelling at me, and I was fresh out of the Marine Corps in those days. Yeah. So I didn't let people yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> he was done with it. I was not okay with that. <laughs> so I remember you bringing the car to us because it looked real similar to West End's old style. I was like, y'all, mm-hmm. he was like, uh, y'all need to change this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Y'all can do a better car. I thought that shit was funny. Yeah, and then a week later I had a uh, a, a logo. Yeah. For yeah. Superman. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I, and so... Up to that point, I think I had, of course, the early first years in Atlanta, for me, I was on the bus, on the MARTA. And uh, so you meet people all over. I carried my bag all the time. I always had uh, my backpack and uh, in my portfolio, and I was always drawing. But no matter who I met anywhere, I don't, it was just like a passing by moment type yeah, of thing. Yeah. Until I walked in to the tattoo shop where you were at, and, um, and ever since then, I... I've known you ever since. Ninety five. Yep. It's been a long few years. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's like twenty three years. No. Eighteen thirteen. No, wait a minute. Nah. This has been because we're eight twenty eighteen now. I started I started in in uh ninety four and I met you the following year. Mm-hmm. That was ninety five. So it's been twenty three years. Damn. Yeah. Mm. Mm, still got no wrinkles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Lord Yada. Tell us where you're from <clears throat> and uh, what do you do? I'm Lord Yata. Not Yoda. Yata with two T's. Y-A-T-T-A. I'm originally from Illinois. Windy City. Uh, by way of Rockford. Moved down here. And uh, I do art on multiple kind of canvases, on skin, on wood, on actual canvas, on shoes, on walls. I draw. <laughs> and when I but was I, first setting up, you were telling us about your path. Uh, what, which one of those mediums did it start on? Oh, what man. were you doing? Well, the early the early days was was on paper, uh, paper and canvas, and then I moved down here, and uh, ended up getting into tattooing. Really heavy, obviously, uh, and it was something where I could uh, actually sell my work, mm-hmm. and so you know I was. Ended up like drawing every day and realized that uh, I can uh, cultivate a clientele, but how, and incorporate my artwork into into what I'm doing. Did so. you have a client at first, and that's how you realized that you could, could. sell your work, or what, what, what? Well, as far as the tattooing goes, uh-huh. it was you know, I started tattooing on my friends. Oh, okay. At first, mm-hmm. and then you know it was a process of learning and uh, through my apprenticeship. <laughs> I began to build up clientele. But before that, you before were that. already, you were painting, drawing. Yeah, I was painting and drawing, but like everybody that, that you know, this drawing like in middle school and high school, you start drawing for your friends and they ask you to draw them a picture for their girlfriend or boyfriend. You do little hearts and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, and they'll kick you off a little chain. So, uh-huh. you know, I uh-huh. did that and uh, was making a little money that way, but never really, I didn't really start like making money. Uh, with my art until I started tattooing. Mm-hmm. You know, try to get in little art shows here and there. You know, little record stores around the way uh-huh. where, where I had little galleries in uh in the section. 
How'd you go uh-huh. about that? Uh, how'd you, how you try to get into record stores? It's just a conversation. You got to walk in and ask. You got to talk in and ask. Close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, bringing my portfolio, showing my work. And it was like, yeah, you know, you can bring your work in here and come to some arrangements. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just keep pushing that and then try to meet up with folks. You know, Atlanta's full of artists and it's a city where there's a lot of I won't say meetups but they have these uh these days where it was like art Mondays at a at Apache. Mm-hmm. They used to do that. So you meet up with other artists, start to connect with them and then you can uh start branching out. So you so you sit so you were hanging out with other artists in and in, in around Atlanta. Yeah. And that's how uh it first sparked the idea to go ahead and start uh talking to people and see what kind of connections, yeah. what kind of uh, ideas are out there. Yeah. And this in the 90s. Yeah, the early 90s. 90s early 90s. <laughs> early and 90s. did you go do this because you thought you wanted to be a working artist, an artist, or you just wanted to explore? What was on your mind? Well, yeah, I knew I wanted to be a working artist. I knew at some point I was going to do something that was going to, uh, where I would be able to sell my work or make a living off of my work. Mm-hmm. You know, even when I had those jobs, like working in pizza places and stuff, I was always drawn to something I always do. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess early on, I didn't really see like a clear path to doing it. But as I began to meet more people and seeing these avenues to where I could show my work and, uh, and do different things like that, I was like, okay. This is just this is where I can go, but then you know, as far as getting like getting into tattooing, mm-hmm. uh, that's where I saw that I could like really like make a living doing doing what I do. Mm-hmm. So even the, the the year I started my apprenticeship was back in '94. I actually started like painting real heavy as well. You know, uh-huh. not just sketching and drawing on paper anymore. I started really painting and, and toying around with acrylics and, and oils and. You know different things like that. Just seeing the uh, seeing the opportunity to earn a, uh, some money f- f- through your art. Did that encourage you to try more art and try to further your um, exploration and creativity? Or um, a- absolutely, because <clears throat> you know everything you know is has a uh, there's a I guess a learning curve to it. So you know I knew I could draw. Use pens and pencils and all of that, but mm-hmm. as you as you grow as an artist, you need to learn different things. So you know, you study other artists. I started, uh, like I said, I started painting, started getting into uh, graphic design and, and learning some computer programs. Mm-hmm. You know, and took classes on photography because that was something I was interested in as well. It was just broadens your perspective, mm-hmm. and uh, and again you you're able to network with other people and then incorporate all these things that you know into what you do Mm -hmm. and try to produce. Right, and so that, and it it starts to all roll together. Roll together, absolutely. And and, and, and roll down the hill in the direction that you always wanted and that you already had the passion for anyway. Right, right. Uh So tell us about um, what your first tattoo experience and then the thoughts that came to your mind saying, I can do this. Well, yeah, well, I got my first tattoo. And, of course, I drew up my design and took it in there to the guy, and I'm watching the whole process, right? Mm-hmm. First time in the shop. And, uh, man, this guy just went back. He messed with some machine and then put this little thing on my arm and sat there for a minute and started tattooing me. And I'm just watching and watching. I was like, mm-hmm. yo, light bulb went off. He just took my drawing and put it on my arm. I need to learn how to do this. I need to learn how to do this, right? And, and my literal thought was, Man, he charged me 150 bucks, and he was done in 30 minutes. Wow. I'm going to learn how to do this. And this is 90s. This is $150 in the 90s. Yeah, that was was 90. I think I got my first tattoo on probably 92. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, then I was in the West End one day uh, across the street, and I saw this little sign. It had a little neon sign. It said tattoo, and it was uh, inside of a heart. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to go in there next week uh, or whenever. I can get back in there and uh, see what the process was. So I brought my portfolio down there, and uh, the lady who ran the shop looked over my work, and uh, 
she took me on like that day I mm-hmm. went in there and asked and they took me on and I had an apprenticeship and I've been doing tattoos since 94 that's Bad. how that happened so I had a vision <laughs> I went and talked to some people uh-huh. and made it happen yeah shit done did so much and owned the shop and worked at other shops and traveled the country doing tattoos and doing my art mm-hmm. and uh it's been it's been a it's been a fun ride and it's still not over with you know what I'm saying right yeah yeah Still cranking out art. Still cranking out art. On a daily basis. That's right. Daily basis, huh? Daily basis. Yes. And this is your space. Fresh There's... ink daily. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Fresh ink daily. <laughs> All right. So everybody who's looking at us right now can see that big painting back there. And there are some comments about it. Um, um, yeah. Uh, that painting in the back is Fly. It's Phoenix Nebula. And uh, we're getting some comments <laughs> online right now. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us about the last show you had because so, so since then, since the nineties, you've worked in tattoos, you've been doing paintings. You're the first person who uh showed me how to move paint around on a canvas with the brush. Uh-huh. Um I'm still uh, I think I still got a long ways to go and that's why I've incorporated markers into it so I can get my sharp lines and right, not have right. to rely on the brush for it. Um uh, but you're still cranking out uh paintings all the time and was it late last year, or was it sometime last year you had last a show? Year. Last year, April. Okay. Was it March? A year ago, almost. March. Last year, March, April, I did my first solo show mm-hmm. at uh, Gallery 992, which is funny. It was actually the building where I first learned how to tattoo. <laughs> so it came full circle, uh-huh. you know, just as far as, like, the place that kind of birthed my tattoo experience. Mm-hmm. I was able to go back there and uh, share what I've learned over the years. Mm -hmm. And I have a variety of different styles. You know, I paint. I did, uh, I paint on doors. This is a door in the background. Um, So I use recycled, I try to recycle old objects and turn them into something new. You know what I mean? Uh, I do block printing. I show some of that work. I do some... um, I did some portraiture work uh, in red pencil mm-hmm. and uh, also skateboards. I worked on skateboards. And there's a couple right there hanging up. We can see them. Right. They're on camera right now. Them. They can see them yeah. behind you. So those are old, actually used skateboards that got damaged and some thrashing, you know. Mm-hmm. So we like to turn old stuff into you. And that's the thing about art. I was telling some, uh, some youth the other day is like, you use what you got and you master that and then, you know, you build up to the next thing. So you can create on anything, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have to be limited. You don't have to have a gang of money to be creative. That's when you get innovative and, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, yeah. you use what you got, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? And, huh. and bring all your, your knowledge and skills to bear. I like that. You know? I use uh, wood cutting. I got jigsaws. You can't see them back there. I got a router. But this is stuff I've been able to accumulate over time. But Mm -hmm. I try to incorporate it into everything I do. The last show we did, which was, was it yesterday? So it was two days ago. Two day, it's already two days ago? Yeah, because what's today? Re- Saturday? Yeah. No, it's a few days ago. The Reclamation <laughs> Project, which my wife, uh, Kimberly, uh, produced. Mm-hmm. Uh, the piece I did for that was on a piece of wood. I use pencil. I use acrylic paint. I uh, cut it out with uh, some uh, some lino cut tools, and uh, I added uh, <laughs> some LED lights to it. So you know, thanks to my sister Aisha, thanks for that. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, it, it it had the tech, it had the the old school, all the stuff put together, and uh, mm-hmm. the piece came out really well. Mm-hmm. You know. And uh, the show was great. So innovative. That's innovative. good. Innovative. Creative and innovative. Yeah. You don't have to have all the all, it, the things that you... Uh, there's not not one list of things that you need to have to, to do the art. Absolutely To not. create. No. Mm-hmm. And, and they're, all, they're all tools. They even down to this... Uh, what do you call this thing here? The surface. The surface. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm really hands-on and still sketch. I still have a sketchbook. So, you know, I, I do all my drawings in thumbnails. And then, you know, you could transfer it to this to, you know, 
add levels to it in mm -hmm. different colors. And the easy thing about this this pad is is you can you can toy with different colors and stuff, and it's not it's not permanent. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you master that and get it down, you, you're good to go to do all different kinds of levels of uh, colors and and adding backgrounds, which you can do on the paper as well, but. <laughs> You don't have to do any erases. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? as, as a different element. Yeah, different element. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yep, yep. Well, Very it's, cool. It's all just tools. So tell us about, uh, so you had a solo, a second solo show early this year, and it was called, uh, I'm looking at the sign right now, <laughs> Like Water. It's called Like Water. Mm -hmm. And I did 21 uh, pieces, 21 new pieces um, on uh, like shelving board, like wood. And they were all basically just a study in, in lines, mm -hmm. in, uh, in waves. So I tried to see how, you know, it evolved through the first one to the last one. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's that sample of some of those. Yeah, that was that line work. probably the initial thought to make me want to do that show. Uh, but also the board in the back was actually the first one I did with the waves. But, uh, so I wanted to toy with that more. And, um... That show was pretty good. Had a nice turnout. Mm -hmm. um, sold a few pieces. Right. It's always good. That's a good thing. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> That's the point. You know, we're not, we not, we not, we not starving artists. We 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 thriving artists. That's right. And that's what we want to promote. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you master your craft and 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 make a living at it. Mm -hmm. And you can. And it's it's possible. It's absolutely possible. That's right. Yeah. Right, because we're proof of that. <laughs> And I know what inspired me was to see other artists succeeding as artists. And exactly. that let me know that it's possible. So if they can do it, then I can do it. And if we can do it, then anybody else who says them, their mind and talent to it can do it. Yeah. Also. Mm -hmm. So talking about brush strokes and painting and how it's, uh, it's been a challenge for me to get that clean lines. What's your secret? Oh, man, there's no secret. It's just... Uh... Practice. That's a lie. No. <laughs> there's a secret. I know there's a secret. Diligent. You don't you want know, to tell us. You, you're the right tools for the job and, and just putting in the time to get it. Uh -huh. It's like, I remember, <laughs> I remember I was showing you some, uh, we got these new needles in. I said, damn, yo, you need to use these needles. Your shading game is going to be elevated like tenfold. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, whatever. You know, he was doing all of that. So, you know, I really just dove in and started doing it, kind of like you dove into the to the graphic design side of the thing, too, mm -hmm. and I kind of fell back on that. But I put more time into my paintings and and, and 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 using these other tools for the tattooing to make my shading better and just learned it. And it's just like that, you know, where you have a strength in uh, a particular tool it was more comfortable in your hand, you know, mm -hmm. the, the markers and shit. Mm -hmm. So you just took that and got better with it and got better with it and mastered that and cr kind of created a style mm -hmm. out of that, you know, mm -hmm. that little bony, yeah. uh, heavy line and uh, multiple of uh, the sketchy lines you did. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's just that. You're putting in the time and just having some, some good equipment, not necessarily expensive, but but good and enough for backup, you know, to where you have a steady hand. Uh, you say practice, you know, I was telling a young kid the other day, uh, you know, tracing is a good tool to use to uh, learn the steady hand, just to keep a steady hand. If you're following lines, you know, you got your whatever you're tracing and then doing that. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, practice. You're right. That's what it is. Um, um the markers that was my 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 uh, shortcut to just clean lines since uh right. I was already um, steady with the pencil and uh, and markers paint markers just right. kind of gave me the same mm -hmm. um, result. Yeah, the same feel. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the brushes, there's so many brushes. I'm probably I'm not the expert on brushes. You can see a bunch of them back here, but you you toy with them, you work with them, you master them, and then Pick up another one and try to learn that one. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Very cool. Jordy says, uh, your niece, Jordan. Yeah. What's up, Jordan? She says she was 23. Oh, no, 23 years ago. She was 22 years old when uh, we started. Yeah, she was two. Mm -hmm. uh, they all grown up. They're trying to make me seem old, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that painting mean? This one, I don't even know what I call that one. Water Lady, I think, or something like that. But it was actually a tattoo design that somebody didn't like. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something with it. So I painted it mm -hmm. on the on the on the door. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, Very it was cool. just something cool. That was yeah, like, nothing really deep. And water, you like drawing water because oh you're... yeah, the whole thing about the water was uh, I know all y'all familiar with Bruce Lee, and uh, one of his quotes was uh, "Be like water," and I think you know everybody should. Be like that. And what he says is be able to change and adapt to your situation. Mm -hmm. and I think artists are a great uh, illustration of that because, just like I was saying, you know, we'll take things and sometimes you'll, you'll have an idea about a piece and you'll start doing it and then you may spill some ink on it or mm -hmm. you drop it or water gets dropped on it mm -hmm. yeah yeah saying? yeah <laughs> and um he did that but you, he but did you that can't but you, but you can't you can't look at it like it's a mistake it's mm -hmm. it's a journey through the process of learning what it is so mm -hmm. you take it and turn it to something else you know make it make it better right. and i mean if you draw on strictly for yourself i mean that's fine because we all do that but if you're trying to present it to somebody else man i spit water on one of these paintings he did it was so dope and uh, I don't know how how it happened, but after it dried, that shit looked so cool. He was upset, obviously. <laughs> but uh, I was like, "No, nah, you need to keep that shit." Uh huh. Uh -huh. It looked even better. It was like a whole yeah. new style was yep. created. Yeah. But uh, you you evolve and adapt to your situation, and uh, it don't look at it like a loss. You gotta just add on and and learn from that situation. Okay. So that's the water. Yeah. And, and of course, you're Aquarius. Yeah, that too. <laughs> it's the age of Aquarius. Okay, they, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, all of that. It goes together. All right, cool. So right now, we're going to take a moment to um, show a, a little bit of our uh, sketchable skills. And this is where the part where I tell you about, um, yeah, just go like that. And uh, about sketchable the app and if you are have a windows 10 machine if you have a a, a surface like we do right here right now we got a, a couple surfaces if you have um, any kind of tablet that runs windows 10 i want you to go ahead and go to the microsoft store and uh let me switch cameras a little bit and so uh, of course this computer was online and now it's not online um uh, but you go to the microsoft store you go ahead and uh, search for Sketchable, and then you're going to download it. And so go ahead and download the the, the free version. It's uh, free to try out. It ha it has limited um, tools and options, but it gives you a good sense of drawing on a tablet. And so we're gonna draw a little bit on the surface. And uh, does that say update? I think there is an update. So in any case, uh, Sketchable is a drawing app that is made specifically for the Surface uh, line of machines that Microsoft created. And what Microsoft did was bring in the, the drawing capabilities of the Cintiq onto a Windows 10 machine. And uh, I think this is like the fifth year of the Surface line. Oh, yeah. And it was five years yeah. ago I was at um, at, at Microsoft Store uh, doing live demos on the tablets that they had then. Right. And um, and the Surface was coming, and I wanted in on that. And then, um, and so it's five years since I've been trying to draw digitally. It's crazy. Been doing it. Yeah. So when you talk about how you get your lines nice and clean, it's yeah. just it's five years later. Mm -hmm. I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, my lines look shaky. I don't see anything right here. I need a paintbrush. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need a paintbrush so it can come out clean. Mm -hmm. 
And so, uh, so we're gonna draw a little bit, and uh, as you draw, tell us the influence about of your, uh, of uh, where your um, that 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 uh, your art, where's the come, where's the influence come from, and where do you get your inspirations? Uh, inspiration is from everything around me. Uh, I read, <clears throat> well, I used to read a lot of comic books. I got a small collection. I like uh, I like really graphic work. And uh, a lot of Japanese animation. Uh, I like the simplicity of uh, kind of that Japanese aesthetic. But I also like a lot of detail, which is kind of a juxtaposition, I guess, of, the, of both of the things. But um, lost my train of thought. Where's your inspiration come my, from? Um... So, uh, manga or manga, comics? Comics. Um, like I said, I like a lot of graphic work. A lot of bold lines. Uh, heavy darks. Uh, and, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, like, cut out, like a cutout style mm -hmm. of work, you know? Mm -hmm. So, which is, 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 is real cool because that kind of falls into the block printing thing that I do. You make relief images you're basically cutting out the uh the shadow areas to create uh to create the image mm -hmm. uh when you transfer it to the linoleum or anything but um you don't have to draw on the edge you can just move it over like I that just move it. Oh, okay uh -huh. well thanks i learned something <laughs> sometimes it moves when i have my hand uh-huh depends on how you touch it uh-huh yeah and uh, and so uh, and you did and you just taught a class a several weeks long class on uh, linoleum. Oh my goodness, we did uh, at the gallery nine nine two over in the West End. Um, There's a mentorship program that they started uh, with, let's say, uh, five different disciplines. It was a photographer, it was a couple painters, uh, illustrator, and. Uh, Myself, I did the block printing, and with age groups up to uh, from seven up to nineteen years old. So I chose to teach show uh, block printing, and uh, my group was like sixteen and seventeen years old, and only two of them had previous uh, previous knowledge of actually doing experience mm -hmm. in doing the block printing, but they all took to it real well. You know, we kind of laid it out over the four-week course, and uh, uh, it culminated in an art show for all the kids. And, you know, their families came out. It was, it was awesome. It was a packed house. And uh, some, <laughs> some of my students actually sold their pieces. So What? That was pretty awesome. What? Yeah, yeah, nice. And one of your was students' the, artwork was also... Well, also the flyer. The for, flyer, uh -huh. for the show. So the, the whole point of that mentoring program, like we was talking about having the experience and to be around other artists... And, and showing them that you can, you know, make a living at doing what you love or what you like, what you have a passion for, you know, whatever that may be, writing, photography, you know, dance, whatever. Um, then being able to see uh, this side of it. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, they went through the whole process of learning how to uh, cut out the image and learning about the materials and what they do and um, learning how to mat the the piece to to hang on the on the wall for the show mm -hmm. you know all of that and even they wrote their artist statements or um, how they felt about the whole experience you know and vaguely remember seventeen years old but these little cats <laughs> it's like the stuff that they were saying about the work and the experience was like wow uh -huh. it's like it's like their mind is way beyond like their age you know mm -hmm. it's like it was, real, it was real cool. It was inspiring. It was humbling at the same time, too. Because I, uh, I think when you share what you know with others, you kind of, it, it unfolds it more to yourself. You have a mm -hmm. better understanding of it, too, mm -hmm. you know. Because it's kind of like learning, learning it again. And, you know, maybe getting some nuances out of it that you didn't the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think is real cool. Yeah, that, that's true. Uh, the, when, the, when you teach... All those things you know, you you have to start digging into why do you do this, um, how, 
um, how your experience made you figure it out that this process helps you. And the more you explain it, um, the more you have to dig it out of yourself. Right. Into words. And where, at, where for the longest, you've been just feeling it. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so then, uh, and then, it, then it's up to the next artist to think for themselves and feel it for themselves and take it further. Yeah. Who knows where that goes? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm just sketching. So, uh, <laughs> and so, so now that uh, we're drawing and talking about the experience, I want to sp- uh, add another uh, element to this uh, stream and the talk about Sketchable. I have codes to give away Sketchable app unlocked. So what I would like to see is any artist who downloads Sketchable today, draws, uh, tries out the free version of Sketchable, and then post a picture on this uh, on, as a comment on this uh, video. Um, I will choose somebody to give them the unlocked code to unlock Sketchable's full power. And then you can do all the things that we can do, which is uh, have layers, multiple layers, uh, and adjustable brushes, uh, but adjustable pencils, and um, and so I want you to go ahead and do that now if you are watching, and if you watch this later. I have plenty of codes to give out. I'm gonna giving out one one a, a week. So for every Artist King Live podcast you see, we're gonna give away a unlock code. All right. So let's see. We got on there. Yeah, we're just checking the messages. We're good. Everything is straight. Oh, shit. And um, and you're drawing. Uh, so what are we drawing? So so this style right here, that has that linoleum cutout yeah. style to it. Yeah, yeah. Very bold. Mm-hmm. And I kind of incorporate it into a lot of my work. It's, uh, I call it maze. Kind of maze work. Like corn? <laughs> not that, that <laughs> maize. Not, not, <laughs> not the kind you eat. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, like a maze, a, like a, a, maze, a labyrinth. Like, like uh-huh. a labyrinth. There you uh-huh. go. Uh, well, yeah. A labyrinth is a little bit different. But, it's, oh, okay. But similar kind of thing. Sure. But I like the patterns. Okay. Um, I like the geometric shapes, and sometimes you can hide little, little stuff in there. It's all you know. It's all in the details. Uh, when you create it, it's like taking that little, that little extra time to put uh, enhance the the lashes on the eyelash or something, or you know whatever. Add or the, the painting, add, add on the painting, and mm-hmm. adding layers to the color. Mm-hmm. And I like to use. Uh, a lot of high contrast colors when I'm when I'm painting, mm-hmm. so like orange on blue or yellow on black and such things like that. It's really uh, capture the eye, even though like some of the imagery may be considered simple, but can still have life in <clears throat> in the lines. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so even though that black contrasts with the uh, the red, yeah. there's still some green or blue green. What is that aqua? Yeah. Um, uh, that still contrasts with the red and contrasts with the black. So everything is bold. Yeah. And then there's that those triangles on the left, that's kind of fade in uh-huh. to the uh, background. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So it's called the ma- maze. 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 <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, so tell us about any upcoming. Uh, right now, we have a show at the at the studio, Tri Cities. Yeah, Tri Cities Tattoo. There's a show called the Reclamation Project. It's gonna be up for uh, two weeks. Um, gotta come out and check it out. It is uh, it was an amazing uh, opening for the show. It's about. Uh, <clears throat> It's about black women and their sexuality and them defining themselves and not having other people define them. And it's a series of uh, nude uh, paintings and drawings and photography, not uh, not porn, but uh, but it's amazing how everybody's interpretation of these particular uh, images uh kind of went over it's colorful it's bright it's uh it's real deep mm-hmm. uh 
1597 White Way, East Point, right downtown East Point. Come it's check like it out. one block from the Martyr Station. One block from the Martyr Station. Yeah. Yep. And so the show is up. It's like uh, like 30 artists or something. It was uh, 23. Actually. 23? 23 okay. artists. Might be 30 pieces in the show. Uh-huh. Uh, some of the photographers did multiple, multiple pieces, but uh, it's pretty amazing. And then yeah. we still have a few pieces left from the 21... Worse. Oh, yeah. Are they still yeah in, in the back room uh, of the shop, there is uh, probably eight or nine pieces left mm-hmm. uh, from my uh, Like Water show. Um, y'all will be able to come out. Shop is open Tuesday through Saturday from 12 to 9. You can come through during business hours. It's free and open to the public. Come check it out. Mm-hmm. Meet some artists, see some cool artwork, and uh, tell your friends about it. That's right. And, and, Have a and, wonderful experience. And visit lordyada.com. Where do we find you online? Uh, L-O-R-D-Y-A-T-T-A dot com is the website. And on all the social media, it is the same. Lord Yata, everything, really. Uh, what are they? IG, Facebook, Backspace. Uh <laughs> Anywhere on the all internet. All of it. Just the go Google, Google. Google the name and you'll see everything. There are no other Lord Yadas. Uh, no. No. When you, you no. Google just start to see. Yeah, yes. Nothing mine's, mine's coming up. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Number one. All right. <laughs> if, uh, we're going to finish drawing. And uh, while you tell us um, one, one, or one piece of advice you'd like to give yourself uh, of 23 years ago. <laughs> What would you give? Yeah, oh, if I had to talk to myself. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness. Um. Be diligent about your time. Be diligent about your time. Because mm-hmm. it's uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, what do you call it uh, distractions out there, mm-hmm. and. Um, if you sit down and think about the time that you're wasting in a week and the things that you want to accomplish in your life, you'd be like, damn, I'm bullshitting. But, you know, be diligent on your time because mm-hmm. you have time to do it. So make make good use of that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I stay, like it. Stay creative. How about that? There you that go. That's a good one, too. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> and innovative. That and was innovative. One. Creative and innovative. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here with us. Um, stay tuned for upcoming um, Facebook Lives with other artists. We have a good lineup of artists that we're going to be talking to in the next few weeks. And uh, we will be back at Post Office pretty soon. Uh, we're scheduling uh, awesome artists to talk to, to share their story, and learn from their experience so that we can continue to share this thriving artist lifestyle, make the art life what you want it to be, create, innovate, and um, and follow your passion. This is the year of exercising your passion. Come on out to Artist King Meetup, second, meet second Saturday of the month at General Assembly. They're free, and we discuss the art business with anybody who wants to talk about their career. This is DTM. And Lord Lord Yada. Word up. Thank y'all. Talk to you later. Peace out. Peace. Come to the outro. Outro. And... and.